If you are from another country, you can have indefinite leave to remain stamped on your country's passport. In that case, you have most of the legal rights of a UK citizen. That is somebody who has a British passport. But if you do not have ILR stamped on your passport, you do not have a right to work or a right to access public funds automatically. I do not know if the UK border forces stamp those rights into non-British passports. Upon entry into the UK in December 2004, my passport bore the following stamps. No access to public funds. After November 2006, when my spouse visa expired, and my relationship with my husband had been formally declared as broken, my passport bore the following stamps. No access to public funds. Must not engage in any form of employment, including unpaid or charitable work. For the bulk of my 14-year stay, I stayed with my boyfriend in London. This was a different person from my lawfully wedded husband, with whom I had entered the UK, hoping to spend the rest of my life with him. The change to my passport by the UK border authorities took place on or after November 2006, which is the date of expiry of my original spouse visa. The change to my passport by the UK border authorities took place after my expulsion from Institute of Physics membership. This led to one elderly solicitor, who did not follow what seemed to be modern policy for lawyers to deny useful legal assistance, speculating that the Institute of Physics, who have corridors into the Home Office, may have requested my removal from the United Kingdom. I got the feeling that lawyers were politically biased to not giving useful assistance, but this was only if the lawyer was Indian, or a white English person. Females fared no better or worse than men in helpfulness, men being more educated. Females had some unrealistic assumptions and extravagant habits, but the men more than made up for their superiority in this respect, by being much more cruel. Immigration legal representatives who were from the black community, Pakistani, or Muslim, were all on the whole kind and just to me. They did not even once try to deport me. One person interrupted his mosque prayers to accept my crisis call and saved me from boarding the plane gratis. While people may laugh at my attitudes, I would always trust a black person or any kind of Muslim as having integrity in any legal or administrative matter, even though I no longer live in the UK. I shall base my judgments on what I see, rather than what people and the press tell me. I shall respect and honor those who help me. I shall not serve ego, be it my own, or that of a popular political trend. It is nice to be important, but so much more important to be nice. If I served ego, I would deserve to die. If you are a man or woman with a British passport, or indefinite leave to remain, you are eligible for public funds. If a homeless tramp has a non-European passport and no permission to access public funds, the Pembroke are technically not supposed to provide coffees to that tramp because the coffees come under public funds. The following categories of people will regularly visit institutions like Pembroke to obtain refreshments or once a month to get their social services check released. An ex-offender. Someone freshly released from a psych ward. Someone below the poverty line. Severely disabled, and with no family, female migrants who are intellectually backward, I mean there is not anything wrong with them physically or mentally, if they are young, they will usually have a high copulatory score, they can work as advisor in a woman-to-woman -woman agency. Such an agency is like the Pembroke only lesser in prestige. Working for the health service renders a high prestige score to unlettered workers than any other type of service. Pembroke workers are the lowest in the hierarchy of occupations on health service payroll.